Hello, this is Arden Kirkland back again with another video for week three of the D4L Community Module. Let's talk about your community members and their identity online. What about you? Are you a lurker or a super user or something in between? Maybe you lurk in one community, but you're a super user in another. How carefully do you craft how you appear online? How is your presence online different from your face-to-face -face presence or from one community to another? I've shared a link to a helpful feature in the New York Times a couple years ago titled, Who Are You Online? with a guest author from the organization, Common Sense Media. It's written more from a perspective of lesson plans for K through 12 students, but I found it very thought provoking even for adults. From the additional resources page, you can take a look at that, and please click through the various links within the article to other helpful resources. For example, I've included one image here from a slideshow of portraits of people in real life next to their online avatars. Some look very different in real life from their avatars, as in the example shown here, but others look very similar. Why choose to be the same or different online? This can be an added challenge or an added opportunity versus a face-to-face -face setting. Regardless of how learners present themselves, you need to get at what they're really learning. I'd like you to reflect in your workbook about your own personas online, but then you need to think about your potential learners. As an exercise, I'm going to have you create personas, imaginary people who represent characteristics of real people in your community like the examples shown here. Give them a face, make a drawing or find an image or make a collage of images, something to help visualize this persona. Fill in some details about them so you can think about their learning needs and what you'll need to do to help them reach your learning objectives. This is a good place to imagine diversity of age, gender, class, cultural background, educational background, comfort with technology, physical and cognitive abilities, any aspects you can think of that may affect their learning in your community. But be careful not to stereotype your hypothetical learners. Visualize them as the unique people they truly are. It may help to think back to the identity chart exercise you did in the diversity module. You're not just your gender or race or prior education. You're all of those things and more in a specific combination unique to you. And it's the same with all your students. You're trying to imagine a full range of needs here and visualize them in a concrete way. In visualizing this potential diversity, you'll be better prepared to provide differentiated instruction, activities that meet different learners' needs really take some time with this exercise. 